Nature's speed limits aren't posted on road signs, but Rice University physicists have discovered a new way to deduce them that is better, infinitely better, in some cases, than previous methods. The big question is, how fast can anything, information, mass, energy, move in nature, said Caden Hazard, a theoretical quantum physicist at Rice. It turns out that if somebody hands you a material, it is incredibly difficult, in general, to answer the question. In a study published today in the American Physical Society journal PRX Quantum, Hazard and Rice graduate student Zhiyuan Wang describe a new method for calculating the upper boon. At a fundamental level, these bounds are much better than what was previously available, said Hazard, an assistant professor of physics and astronomy and member of the Rice Center for Quantum Materials. This method frequently produces bounds that are 10 times more accurate, and it's not unusual for them to be 100 times more accurate. In some cases, the improvement is so dramatic that we find finite speed limits where previous approaches predicted infinite ones. Nature's ultimate speed limit is the speed of light, but in nearly all matter around us, the speed of energy and information is much slower. Frequently, it is impossible to describe this speed without accounting for the large role of quantum effects. In the 1970s, physicists proved that information must move much slower than the speed of light in quantum materials, and though they could not compute an exact solution for the speeds, physicists Elliot Lieb and Derek Robinson pioneered mathematical methods for calculating the upper bounds of those. The idea is that even if I can't tell you the exact top speed, can I tell you that the top speed must be less than a particular value, Hazard said. If I can give a 100% guarantee that the real value is less than that upper bound, that can be extremely useful. Hazard said physicists have long known that some of the bounds produced by the Lieb-Robinson method are ridiculously imprecise. It might say that information must move less than one. It's not wrong, but it's not very helpful. The more accurate bounds described in the PRX quantum paper were calculated by a method Wang created. We invented a new graphical tool that lets us account for the microscopic interactions in the material instead of relying only on cruder properties such as its lattice structure, Wang said. Hazard said Wang, a third-year graduate student, has an incredible talent for synthesizing mathematical relationships and recasting them in new terms. When I check his calculations, I can go step by step, churn through the calculations and see that they're valid, Hazard said. But to actually figure out how to get from point A to point B, what set of steps to take when there's an infinite variety of things you could try at each step, the creativity is just amazing to me. The Wang Hazard method can be applied to any material made of particles moving in a discrete LRT. That includes oft studied quantum materials like high temperature superconductors, topological materials, heavy fermions, and others. Please support my channel to grow by pressing subscribe button and the bell icon, we will notify you new tech videos. Thank you.